Hey folks, it's Jim. I haven't shown my end phase system, so I wanted to go over that. Uh, today I usually deal with the smaller solar systems, which I think is the way to start with solar. Begin to see and uh, start to trust it and uh, understand that it does work and then progress out. Uh, but I've had this system running for about three years. Um, if you'll see here, we're putting out 1.63 kilowatts right now. That's what my little system is doing. And over the life of the system, almost three years, 8.58 megawatts. But again, it should be 9 megawatts. But I've had the system down, incorporating other systems into my hybrid. I run a hybrid system here that I won't show online. It can be running overlapping powers, can be extremely dangerous if you don't know what to doing or if you're not detail oriented. So I won't show that online. I will show, but I'll show each system independently. Uh, so, uh, but mainly, we're putting out 1.63 kilowatts, 8.58 megawatts for the lifetime of the system. We have plus web 8. That means all eight microinverters are operating nominally, and um, it means my system is a go. And also you can tell just by the power. Now this box communicates with the web as well, so you can run daily, weekly, hourly, monthly, yearly, uh, lifetime reports any way you want, by panel, by rack, since I run two different racks. Uh, I can each evaluate each racks because uh, they're five degrees different in the way they tilt towards south. Uh, because as summer comes, you want your panels a little more westerly for that summer collection. So I kind of split it. And I felt that I get, and that's why I built two racks as well. I don't want everything the way it is. And uh, in my new system, you'll see uh, what I'm doing too. And I don't talk a lot about it online because that those are those are my analysis studies and uh, things that I do. And incorporate uh, for other people. Uh, so now um, these are easy to install. Let's look at what end phase is. I wanted to show you how small the box is too, just so you know. It's not a big cumbersome box. Uh, you know, it's no bigger than my hand. It's about 10 inches wide, uh, five or six inches um, in width that way. Uh, it's not. It's not a big big deal. It goes on the wall like a router or anything else. Uh, it plugs right into an outlet because it's reading the power grid. Um, so And it communicates to the inverters that way. Now if you look out there, there's my solar panels. And let's zoom in on that. Okay, and those are my racks. I ground mount for multiple reasons and we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, but there's the M-phase inverter. It's a little tiny box goes on the back of the panel. It's called a microinverter. Now you can see the two MC4 cables to the left. They're going into, they're taking the DC energy from the panel, putting it into the inverter, the microinverter. And you see the cable to the right going out. That goes to a bus line that connects all four of those panels in that array together. And they put out 220 single phase, just like the grid does. So, and then uh, Hertz wise, it links up with them. It gets in the same cycle as the grid, and you have a power system putting 220 back to the house just like the grid does. Then it runs net metering. In other words, I have two meters out on the pole, one for power that I use and one for power that I send back to the grid. And that's called net metering. At the end of the month, they plus and minus, and then I get my bill. But isn't this nice when you get this kind of a bill? No payment is needed this month. Isn't that wonderful? So people complain about the cost of solar when in actuality this is the least expensive time to do solar. Uh, it's absolutely awesome. Uh, so low cost. To me it's a no-brainer. Let's go over ground mount and why I ground mount versus roof mount. Okay, And you can see my systems on two separate racks, four panels per rack. Why did I do it this way? Because, again, I split my system. Uh, some are pointing a little more westerly than others for summer collection, and the other rack is pointing a little more southerly for winter collection. So, and also then it's single axis rotation. So right now they're pretty much like this, collecting the sun low on the horizon. In about 10 days I'll tilt them back another 15 degrees because the sun is starting to track higher on the horizon. And uh, it's summer, they'll almost be flat because the sun's tracking directly overhead. So that increases my output over the years as well. And that's another reason why I suggest ground mount, single axis rotation. You can actually make a smaller system, as I've shown before in some of my videos, much more powerful and do a better job. It only takes me about 10 minutes to change the uh, axis of the ground mounts. Um, 
three times, four times a year. Uh, so that's 40 minutes a year to increase my output uh, 10 to 20 percent annually. Also, um, but anyway, let's get away from that. So, uh, but you can see that the ground mounts are pretty primitive, easy to do. I just use pressure treated. You can buy ground mounts if you want. You're going to spend money for them. I just had pressure treated uh, lumber, so I went ahead and put them on pressure treated. Ground mount versus roof mount. Ground mount is low cost. And also the other thing uh, with ground mount, and the reason why I do it the way I do it, is because they're easy to clean. In a snowy, icy environment like I'm in, it's minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit today. Uh, at 8 o'clock, that's what it was outside. And if you have snow on your panels, they're not going to clear. Uh, I can go out with a push broom at 8 o'clock or before 8 in the morning and clear my panels in about 5 minutes or less. Isn't that nice? That's the advantage to ground mount versus roof mount. And in the winter when you don't get a lot of sun, those are huge, huge uh, input numbers that you need. Um, there just isn't a lot of sun in the winter and if you get a snowstorm and it's below freezing, they're just not going to clear very fast. So you may not even get your panels producing decent energy until noon or so, whereas mine start producing at 8 o'clock some pretty good energy. And so that power factor over a year in a snowy, icy environment is huge. So I just wanted to share that. Also, I'm not drilling holes in my roof. And in a snowy, icy, freezing to uh, sub-freezing to freezing uh, to above freezing environment those little holes can get expanded quite rapidly over time and uh, you have problems with your roof in Maine too so that's another reason why I didn't want a roof mount also the other thing is if anything ever goes wrong with the panels or an inverter I can fix it quite quickly nothing has and end phase warranties those inverters for 15 years that's just another thing to think about uh, box inverters don't do that also it has the redundant safety feature where if the power grid is out the end phase shuts down now that's a detriment if you're trying to charge batteries because when the power's out end phase is out now you can buy a special inverter that will uh, charge your batteries and keep end phase running while there's no grid power uh, but that thing is like three thousand dollars uh, I built my own and I uh, run a different hybrid system here that I thought was better for my applications, what I wanted. But this does keep me, um, you know, it saves me about 50 to $70 a month. So that's the advantage to that. Again, single axis rotation increases your output. Being able to clear your panels quickly uh, by 8 o'clock in the morning really increases your output. And those are the reasons why I like ground mount, okay? Um, so and also you can run any kind of report you want um that's the other thing about end phase the versatility of that system you can and you can also analyze other people's uh systems so isn't that awesome too and the reason why there's that tape on it because that's my grid location so uh people that i let can go on and analyze what i'm doing every day as well as i can analyze what they're doing every day and do comparative studies and things of that nature and that's another reason why i wanted end phase at the time they were the only ones doing this uh so that's why i wanted it um but a lot of other systems have gone to this as well now so there are many choices out there for you i just wanted to show you mine and the fact that i absolutely love it uh, if I could do it over again, absolutely I would, even though the cost now is cheaper to install this same system by about $1,000, <coughs> I've still, I've saved way more than that by having the system installed over the three years, so it doesn't matter, and that's why I say, if you haven't gone solar, just do it while you have a tax uh, rebate involved with it. Um, so, I just wanted to uh, go over this, this is my grid tie system. Uh, simple, easy to install. There was no argument for my power company again once I said Enphase. Siemens is a huge corporation, the one that made uh, Enphase, and they put the redundant safety feature in the box. I believe that even today, still the codes are no DC disconnect at the panels because of the safety ability of the Enphase. Okay, so um, I just wanted to share that as well. Uh, so, um, but again, the downside is power's out your solar grid's out so that's the downside but for me i wanted uh something that i could walk away uh be gone for an extended period of time and not worry about it it would take care of itself so um those are the things i wanted to share about the in phase system 
Uh, and again, uh, boy, isn't it nice when you get a bill like that. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. No payment needed this month. And, uh, you know, again, saving about $50 to $70 a month, incorporating the changes into your life that are necessary um, to reduce your power consumption before you build your system. Those things are important, too, because once you become solar, you become very observant of power consumption. Uh, it just changes you. Uh, inside and that's another reason why I recommend people go solar it really gets you in touch with what's going on around you and uh, there are simple things to doing like clothes dryer for our clothesline for 30 to 40 minutes while the sun's out on your clothes uh, an hour maybe or two and then throw them in the dryer for 15 minutes to fluff them boy think about the savings of that alone over a year uh, switching to a hybrid hot water heater think about the savings of that power over over a year uh, you know and how much smaller you can build your solar system that's why these eight panels get me almost carbon neutral uh, because of the changes that I incorporated into my life before I built my system right uh, and during so a uh, small system uh, that was low cost really is very effective for me anyway I uh, hope you're all doing well Jim out